We're going to play a bit with um, very simplified palettes to see what we actually need with this. Now, as I have said many a time, that's a very personal decision and it is absolutely up to you. But let's explore a little bit. These are two of my uh, older Altoids kits that um, I simplify a lot to keep the weight down. This is the new one I just made for Sketchbook School. And this is one with um, different, very different primary colors. So let's make a few color wheels and see what we can do. I actually don't care for working with uh, fresh paint like this. Many artists do, but it just doesn't work that well for me. But we'll do it anyway because there they are. This one has Hansa Yellow Light, uh, Quinacridone Rose, Thalo Blue, and I've uh, added a couple of convenience colors. This is Burnt Sienna and Indigo, which for the purposes of this I probably won't use. Let's give myself just a little more room here. And I actually cleaned the yellow so you can see that it is yellow. Wahoo! Make a typical color wheel here. Plenty of color in there. Oh, I need mixing room. Let's just dump the extras here. And the phthalo blue. Whoops! Now, oh dear, I got some green in there. So we'll go this direction first. A little more blue. And that's a nice green. And a blue green. Now let's wipe the palette to clean it. I know, wasting paint, but it's a demo, okay? And let's clean out the yellow again, too. Actually, I wouldn't worry about it otherwise. I would use those paints doing something else. Let's mix the... Dang it! I still have green and yellow. Meh, sorry. Get it off the side here where it's cleaner. And this is a pretty nice orange. A little more yellow in it. And it's a warm orange. A little more red. And it's almost like cadmium yellow meat or cadmium red medium. And once again, let's mix our red. And the phthalo blue. I was surprised to find what a beautiful um, lavender that is. A little red. A little more blue. And that really gives you a wide range of color for only three colors. Now if you're missing the neutrals a bit more, all is not lost. We'll take our lavender blue and we will add some yellow and a little more red, a little more yellow, and we have kind of a burnt sienna-ish. If you add more yellow, you get a yellow ochre-ish. And if we add all three colors in about equal amounts, We can get a very dark dark. Just experiment. Play around and see what you can do. Maybe um, make a more subtle green. Kind of an olive color. The possibilities are endless, really. Now let's play with um, a more subdued triad of colors. Still good strong colors. This is uh, quinacridone gold, this is quinacridone burnt scarlet, and this is indigo. So let's play with them a little bit. 
nice bold uh, gold that will act as our yellow. Subtle red, kind of brownish. And a deep, uh, really deep dark indigo. See what I mean about rewetting your paints a little ahead of time? It's probably been five minutes for these and they are dark and juicy. I'm going to use this for my mixing area because I want to keep it cleaner. We'll see how that goes, right? And mixing the Quinn Gold and Quinn Scarlet. Almost a burnt sienna. A little more Quinn Gold. Makes a warm Quinn. A little more of the Quinn Burnt Scarlet. Oops, not really too much more. But still a, a lot of nice variation. Wiping that paint out again. I think my paint water is getting funky. Gee, imagine that. Uh, some indigo. And Quinn Scarlet. Uh, burnt Scarlet. We can pretend that's our purple. <laughs> Doesn't really look very purple, but hey. It would act as purple. More indigo. And we just get a slightly warmed indigo color. Now, let's see what we can get by way of greens. Indigo. And burnt scarlet. The nice thing about having a white mixing area is that you can kind of tell what the color is going to be like, and you can adjust it. This is beating up some because I haven't roughened the surface, so you could do that ahead of time. See what a nice rich green that is? I like that. More of the indigo, and we get a deep evergreen. More of the Quinn Gold, and we get a lighter olive. See, how, see what you can do with just a very few paints. Now I'm going to do one more quick little one with colors that I don't normally use, but first I'm going to dump this dirty water and get fresh. This is a little demo set that I mixed up for a sketchbook school, and we're just going to play with it a little bit because actually I have never used these three as my primaries, so we're going to see what happens. This is a cadmium yellow medium, this is a cobalt blue dark, or deep, and this is a pyrrole scarlet that I use now instead of cadmium red medium. And again, I will probably use this for my mixing area because um, this isn't painted white. So, oops, really ought to start with the yellow. And it's still very soft because I just made the set, so it's gooshy and I don't like it. But we shall deal with it. This is the Cobalt Blue Deep. It's not a terribly saturated color, but it's nice and pure. And Pyrrol Red is a very warm red, like cadmium colors. So, let's see what happens when we mi mix the cadmium and the cobalt. Probably should have started with the yellow again. Oh well. <laughs> And it's not going to make a clean singing violet like we've seen before because there's too much yellow in that red. So, makes kind of nice royal purple though. Let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. And let's mix more of the red in. And we just get kind of a subdued red. Now, let's see about our yellow and blue. Hmm, that's a little bit more to the yellow. A little more blue in that. Oops. Just don't want to pick up that well, sorry. 
much more of a subdued um, English green. I don't know why I think of that as English green, but it reminds me of the English watercolorists. Not a really good clean blue-green there, but useful and subtle. I can see that for a foggy day. And, woo, getting it in paint as usual. Let's clean the palette. I could use a larger mixing area, truthfully, especially for this Gucci paint. But let's see what we can do for our orange. Here's with just a little bit of yellow, it's even a warmer red than the pyrrole. Well, that's a pretty orange. That's quite orange-orange. And more yellow. And we just get a nice warm yellow. So I like the colors a lot in the warm range. Not so much in the cool. But still, this is uh, a very traditional triad of colors. Well, actually it would have been cadmiums, but hey. Uh, with the problems caused by mining heavy metals, we kind of tend to tra stay away from those. And a lot of manufacturers are stopping making them, so I'm trying to wean myself. At any rate, once again, the colors that you choose are very personal, and whatever floats your boat works. There are no perfect colors, there are no perfect mixes. Value is usually more important than matching color, exactly, anyway. But boy, is it fun to pay, play with a box full of watercolors. Have fun. <laughs>